Kentucky Senator Rand Paul's member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, among others. Senator, good to have you with us this morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Your reaction to that information about the leak that, that the former FBI director rather cavalierly admitted to yesterday? You know, I guess my question, if he's so good at leaking, was he doing that all along as head of the FBI? There's a lot of leaks coming out of the intelligence community, and not all of them are very benign. Now, this leak came when he was out of government service, but, you know, a lot of the leaks about people's private conversations, like General Flynn's conversation, that's a felony and a very serious crime. So I think we still need to be asking all of these folks, did you or did you give the information? Because, see, some of them are saying they did not personally leak the information, but they gave it to a friend to leak it. That's still leaking, and it's still a crime if it were private conversations of individuals. Now, I'm not saying Comey did that, but we do need to get to the bottom of who is the leak and who are the leaks in the intelligence community. Well, we know that it was a source of friction between him and the president um, by that, you know, annotated memo that he himself put together. Apparently, they were having uh, a dispute about that. The president didn't think he was serious enough about it, cracking down enough about it. Uh, and, um, and then for that admission to come yesterday, does it raise new questions for you? Yeah, and I think the take-home message from the testimony, for, for me anyway, was that the president was vindicated. Comey confirmed that the president was never under investigation. Three times he told the president that. And I guess I think it's understandable to me why the president would be a little bit put out with Comey and say to Comey, good grief, if you're telling me I'm not under investigation, why don't you tell the American people? Because this cloud of an investigation is really damaging. And I think that's sort of an honest uh, appraisal uh, and an honest reaction by the president. And so I think everything else is sort of sour grapes over the election still. But I do think that we're distracting from really what the president wants to do to get American jobs back right now. And I think we can get back to that. But uh, we, we need not to be too distracted by sort of crazy allegations that in the end all turned out to be really without substance. All right, let's turn to another leaker uh, in the headlines right now. And this is this young woman out of Georgia who uh, served honorably in the Air Force. She was honorably discharged. Um, she was described as a scholastic superstar, somebody who had been given uh, a full ride on an engineering sco uh, scholarship. So we know that this is a bright young woman. Uh, but what prosecutors laid out against her uh, was pretty damning if it turns out to be true. Again, innocent until uh, proven guilty. Uh, but there were some pretty serious allegations that she may have intended to do even more leaking. I think that the enormous power of being able to spy on Americans' conversations, their emails, all of this, that's such an enormous power that there can't really be, there has to be a very low tolerance for letting people leak information. And so, yes, I think they're, they're, you know, she needs to be prosecuted. We can't tolerate this. But really, the biggest leak that we've had and the most important and the most damaging to an individual's reputation was leaking General Flynn's conversation with the Russian ambassador or foreign minister. We have to figure out who leaked that. And if Susan Rice says she did not leak it, but she unmasked them, we have to ask Susan Rice, who were the people that you talked to about this? Because, you know, for her to say she didn't leak it, but, oh, I gave it to my press team to leak it, that is still leaking. So we need to ask all those questions under oath, and we need to get to the bottom of who was listening to General Flynn's conversations, because leaking that is a felony and very dangerous to the republic. Well, as you know well, that there are many subpoenas out to several of those individuals that you have mentioned. Uh, there have been requests for them to testify under oath before either the Senate or the House. Uh, some are cooperative others are not. How confident are you that we'll get information about leaking, about unmasking, uh, potentially by Obama administration officials with the accusation it may have been done for political reasons? Well, and that's a real question that we may not be able to find out publicly right now, but the special counsel, I think, has the power to bring them in. I'm guessing the special counsel's uh, ability to bring people in may be greater than a committee. And also, sometimes you can find the truth a little better because a grand jury or a special counsel works uh, behind closed doors. And so they try to gather information and then determine whether or not they can do anything with it. But I hope that the special counsel will also be looking at this because I don't think Americans want uh, to live in a society where their government becomes so powerful that it's listening to all of our phone calls, reading all of our emails. Realize that if you have sent an email in the last couple years and you mention the word ISIS or ISIL or mention the words Assad, there's a chance that that is in a database that can be searched without a warrant. I'm going to be putting forward reform legislation when this comes up later in the year that says to search an American's name, you should go to a judge in a public mm -hmm. court and ask for a warrant. That's what the Constitution reads. Well, the framers had great wisdom in crafting the Fourth Amendment, so we'll keep tabs on that legislation. Keep us updated, Senator. Thank you.